Hi, I'm Jake and welcome to the fourth part of the video series about my self-designed plywood canoe in which I would like to show you the final assembly, the painting process and the first tour with it. In this video I'm going to show you how I mounted the thwarts, seats, inspection covers as well as the whole coating process. As the gunwales were the only parts that have not yet been coated with epoxy, I did this first. After the tape was removed, everything sanded with 180 grit and cleaned with acetone, I started applying the varnish. I therefore used the roll and tip method and undiluted varnish. I just applied two layers of varnish wet on wet on the inside. After that I could mount the seats what I used, threaded rods, wooden pipes, nuts and between each layer some rubber washers for. This way the seats can later be demounted rather easily. All handles and thwarts were mounted the same way. I decided to mortise them for optical and weight reasons. Therefore, I mixed thick and epoxy as usual and trimmed the overstanding dowels with a Japanese pull saw. After everything was sanded again, I glued the inspection covers in place. At first all surfaces were cleaned with acetone and the end grain of the plywood was protected from moisture with epoxy. Finally, the covers were glued with Sikaflex. For the outside of the hull, I wanted a wooden look above and a resistant coating below the waterline. You can of course uh, find out where the waterline is with your CAD system, but as I was playing around with it anyways, I used FreeShip for it. Once a working model is available in FreeShip, it can iteratively be calculated how large the draft is at a given total weight. In this case, 13.5 cm at 300 kg. This draft value is then entered for the model. In the lines plan you can see the waterline even better. The waterline was then transferred to the boat with a sophisticated heat beam which we called a laser by Dr. Evil. I then taped the area under this line in order to paint the sides of the hull. And again I did it the roll and tip way. Of course, all surfaces were cleaned with a vacuum cleaner and acetone at first. But this time, after I applied two layers wet on wet, I sanded it with 240 grit and applied two more layers wet on wet. Here it is important to pull off the tape directly after the varnishing. The area under the waterline needs to be the most resistant and flat, so I put a layer of epoxy and 20% micro balloons on top of it to reduce the uneven. This layer was then grinded down with 180 grit. 
The next step was to apply two layers of epoxy light primer, which I applied wet on wet. As the hull was still not smooth enough, I waited until the primer had cured completely and sanded it again with 180 grit by hand. After that I cleaned it with epoxy primer thinner. Then it was time to apply the two component PU paint. And here again I used the roll and tip method. After I applied the second and last layer of PU paint, I removed the masking tape directly. After the paint had hardened completely, I taped a keel guard tape to the lower edges of the hull to protect it from sharp stones and other obstacles in the water. And suddenly the boat was built. So we took it to the water and gave it a try. And how does the canoe ride? Well, it can easily carry two adults and two children, it has a good combination of speed and maneuverability, and it holds the course nicely. The base plate is a bit wobbly, which I might want to fix with a keel. All in all, it was a very nice project, where I learned a lot and gained a lot of experience. All stages of work are not very complicated. Sometimes the result was better and sometimes worse. At the beginning I expected a budget of around 600 euros, which ended up being more like 900. This is also because I experimented a lot with epoxy and paint and tried to build up the layers below the waterline, like in real sailboat building. By far my biggest mistake was the time management. I thought the project would be completed in three months, but it took me about one and a half years. All in all, I needed about 100 hours of work. So if you want to build this canoe, all templates for the planks and a lot more information are in the video description. Last but not least, I would like to thank my family and friends for their loan tools, the valuable discussions, the patience and all the freedom at home that made this build possible in the first place. I hope you liked the video, thanks for watching and goodbye.